As always, I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak to you. If you would be turning to the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, I would like to take the next few moments for us to study one of the parables that Jesus uses to describe the kingdom of God. <clears throat> the particular parable that we're going to be reading and studying about this evening is also found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32, as well as in Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. So again, our text... Luke chapter 13, verses 18 and 19. There it says, Then he said, Unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden. And it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. There are certainly different, several different types of mustard. Uh, it is thought that there are one of three types that Jesus had in mind at this time. Charlock mustard, white mustard, or black mustard, which is most likely what he was referencing. Black mustard, speaking of the seed itself, was the smallest known in the days of Jesus. Black mustard could grow up to 10 feet, maybe even 12 feet tall as a, a bush, or he calls it a tree here. And this would take only a few months. Black mustard was cultivated for its seeds to use as a condiment, as for or as well for its oil. Because of its large size, when fully grown, it was able to support the birds that would readily light on it as it ate this, the black mustard seeds. Among the rabbis, this comes from the ISBE, page 2101. Among the rabbis, the term grain of mustard was a common expression for anything very minute, which explains our Lord's phrase, faith, as, a, as grain of mustard seed. So this evening, I would like for us to consider this parable and what it means for us as Christians. First, when we consider the, the mustard seed, we notice that once it's planted, it's cast into the garden, it grew. The mustard seed grew. Growth can only begin to occur when a seed is planted. This parable expands further on the parable of the sower, as found in Luke chapter 8, uh, particularly verses 8 and 15. When seed falls on good ground, it will produce fruit. We see that when the mustard seed was planted, it grew, and ultimately, patience leads to fruit bearing as opposed to the other three different soils. Ultimately, there's only two, good and evil soil, but there's three subcategories of evil soil. Once planted, the individual needs to keep the word of God, and through patience, fruit will be born. When the word of God is sown in the hearts of men, growth occurs. When one obeys the gospel... They become a babe in Christ. John chapter 3, verses 3, and 3 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1, through tw uh, 1 and 2. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Through process of time, patience, and work, much effort, maturity is brought on. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Secondly, the mustard seed, we see, waxed a great tree. 
through enough time and enough nutrients that were given, it became a great tree. Although the mustard seed is small, it is not expected to remain small. As babes in Christ, many things can offend us as we progress through this life. Romans chapter 14. Our duty as babes in Christ is to learn and figure out how to properly apply God's word. This process removes our ignorance. It causes us to grow. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. God's word is the only thing that will have the ability to furnish us unto every good work. But there's only one way for us to obtain that is and that is our studying of it. And these different experiences that we would go through ultimately brings wisdom. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 which states but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, a babe in Christ is not going to be able to do the same things as a faithful child of God that has been a member of the church for 10, 15, 20 years, and even beyond. But we as babes in Christ are expected to eventually be able to do those different things. Also citing James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, where the temptations, the trying of our faith works patience. It gives us the ability to endure different things that we will face in this life. We know from the first psalm that the faithful are compared to a tree that is planted by the water. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So the process of growing ultimately leads to a larger tree. Third and final, we see that the mustard seed provided for the birds of the air. By being a fully grown tree or plant, bush, shrub, especially if it's 10 to 12 feet tall, this mustard plant would be strong enough to support the birds as they light upon it. The Christian will bear spiritual fruit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 35. And Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45. The Christian will ultimately be able to support the weak and afflicted, physically speaking. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. And James chapter 1, verse 27. Just as that mustard, mustard plant or tree physically was able to support the birds of the air, we as Christians, through process of time, should be able to, to support others physically. Caring for their needs. We had a, I have a co-worker who lost her son a couple weeks ago. And we were able to, as a company, take up a collection to supply for some of her needs. That was a great thing to be able to do. It's an also an opportunity to show her that people care about her. And as always, it's, an, it's a great opportunity to show her the gospel. Next, when we consider the ability of the Christian, the Christian will support the weak and afflicted, spiritually speaking. Every Christian, every individual member of the church should be salt. 
We should possess the preserving nature of salt. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. 50, that is. And Luke chapter 14, verse 34. As well as Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Now, oftentimes it will take our experience to know just how to be that preserving agent and just how salty we need to be in spiritual matters. We should also possess the exposing nature of light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. 1 John chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And Revelation chapter 1, or 21, verses 23 through 24. We are to reflect the light that we receive from God's word, from the Father of lights. The Christian should be able to support the good works of fellow Christians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we there see Paul discussing the nature of the Corinthians and their, their promise to deliver a large sum of money. We see there in verses 1 and 2 that their good works provoked many others to do the same. And we see in verses 8 through 15 that Paul points out that they were so blessed they could actually help the brethren. What a great thing to be consider of, considerate of. Have to have so many blessings that you're able to share with others. There's a song that we barely sing here. Make me a channel of blessings. The Christian is a channel of blessings. When we use our lives correctly. We as individual members and certainly as the church are to provoke one another unto good works. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. This can come in the form of correction just as it can come in the form of a compliment. Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 5 shows us that the individual must bear their own burdens but we're also to be mindful of our brethren. When they're overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual should be able to restore such a one, knowing that it could be you in that same situation. The stronger the Christian, the stronger the branches, the more we're able to support. Ideally, we support each other. Again, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Everyone who has ever been converted to the law of Christ has started at what you would call square one, as a babe in Christ. The church has always existed in the mind of God. It is His eternal purpose. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11. It became a reality to mankind thanks to Christ who built that church. Are you a member of that church? If you're not, why are you not a member? of Christ's church, Christ's body, the body of the saved. Why not obey his saving gospel tonight? Just as a mustard seed that is planted in good soil, whether it's an individual garden or as much mustard at the time was wild mustard, are you that good soil? If you're not, every word that was just said tonight will do you no good. But we certainly pray that you are good soil. And if you're not a Christian, why not become one tonight? But as a member of the church, as a child of God, has your growth been stunted due to sin? If this is the case, why not put that sin away through God's second law of pardon, repentance and prayer? Whatever the need might be this evening, whether you need to render obedience to Christ for the first time or you need to be restored as a faithful child of God, make that, whatever your need is, make it known tonight as together we stand and sing.